Hey y'all, welcome to Parker's Reef. On today's episode, we're gonna check out Jared's SBS filled seven foot cade. Alright, thank you for joining me on yet another episode of Parker's Reef and today we are doing yet another tank tour. This time I finally get to see a good reefing buddy of mine, Jared. He has a Cade 2100 that I've not yet seen in person so I'm super, super excited to get there and check out this full to the brim SBS only system with some really cool fish choices in there. Now, just before we roll the footage, I will give one little disclaimer to say that Jared is a solid unit. And uh, unfortunately on the day, my microphone placement did mean that every now and then some of the audio got a little bit muffled. So sometimes you may hear my voice come over to replace Jared's muffled voice where the audio did get uh, scrambled. So uh, just to explain what's going on there, but I'm sure you'll follow along as we go. There's heaps to cover because there's lots of really cool fish, really, really good coral in this system and no shortage of jaw dropping equipment and infrastructure around it. So um, other than that, I got nothing else to say other than to roll the footage. All right, I am here at Jared's to check out this incredible Cade tank and there's heaps to go over. So firstly, thank you so much for making it possible for us to come here and film your tank. We've got lots to cover here. Lots of cool things I can see from here already, but um, I have not seen this tank before. I'm super excited to dive into it. Can you tell us, firstly, it's a Cade. What, what kind of Cade are we looking at? Firstly, thanks for coming, Sam. I uh, appreciate you coming up from Melbourne to take a look. Thank you. Uh, what we got is the Cade 2100, uh, so seven foot. The big boy Cade. Yeah, uh, currently the biggest Cade you can get, I believe, unless something else is in the making at for the sure. moment. Yep. yep. Um, yeah, so 2100 long, uh, I think it's 650 wide, 600 tall. So I think the entire system's about a thousand liters, including sump. Yeah. Yes, nice, nice, yeah. good size system. And um, how long has this been running for? Um, so the tank's been up and running uh, close to two years. Okay. Uh, I did have a, um, yeah, a bit of a crash about a year ago. So to this stage where you see it now uh, is a year old. Yep. And um, a bit of a reboot. Yeah, it was. It, well, I call it 2.0. <laughs> um, yeah, there's a bit of a reboot. Uh, just yeah, a bit of equipment malf malfunction that um, had to reset. Uh, with that, it was initially a mixed reef. Yes. Um, and then once planning it all all over again. Um, for the 2.0, decided to go SPS only. Sure. Um, just for the pure fact that um, I really like my angels. Yes. I wanted to introduce some angels and I just knew that they weren't gonna be compatible with a lot of the, the LPS that I did have in the system previously. Yeah, sure. Uh, and with a complete reboot, I could you know, I could go down that, that route yeah. then. Guys like that big, that big emperor over there, he'd love to just munch away on LPS polyps where yeah. if he's taken a couple of SPS polyps, it's probably not really going to be that detrimental. It's just going to pull yeah. polyps back out again he five minutes later. He single-handedly devoured all of the zoas that were in the tank. <laughs> um, so this rock in particular was kind of covered from the initial... It, it kind of survived and um, introduced him and he, he took them all out. So he finished the job off. He was always a fish that um, I wanted in the tank. Yes. Um, he was a kind of a, a goal, but uh, never really worked out in the initial plans. But yeah, now sure. that uh, it's SPS, he's, he's been excellent. He's, um, he's, he is the boss. Yes. Definitely is the boss, but he's not... Um, He's not too... Doesn't have to remind everyone constantly. I think it's just his size. He, <laughs> yeah, he, 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 they know. They know he's, they the, know boss, he's yeah. the boss. No, fair enough. So yeah. this tank's been running for two years. You've been in the hobby for longer than that? Or surely uh, this wasn't your first system? No, I've been in, in and out of the hobby for about uh, 20, 25 years now. Yeah, okay. So um, well experienced. There's a little bit of um, talk with, with mum and dad that they used to put my bouncer in front of a fish tank that we had in the lounge room and um i'd bounce away in that looking at some some goldfish that we had when i was much younger but um even growing up as a teenager i had nine foot aquariums in my bedroom and yeah right. um, most of it had been uh freshwater i did yes. a lot of 
um, Tanganyika and cichlid breeding um, sure. through my teens and early 20s and uh, life took over for a little bit and yep. shut down some tanks and whatnot, got back into it. Uh, this is the, I'd like to say probably the fourth reef tank that I've done. Yeah, okay. Um, the, I had a, before moving into this house, I had a four foot uh, Aqua One uh, tank that was a mixed reef. Yes. Uh, but yeah, when when moving here, I thought I gotta I gotta do something quite nice. To yeah, well, you got the perfect spot in here for it. Yeah, it gives a heck of a presence right when you enter the house. Yeah, right at the front door. <laughs> <laughs> no, it works a treat. Now, we'll we will we will get into the the coral and the fish at some stage, but yep. we've got to cover some of the equipment because you've got a pretty cool setup going on here. Starting right up the top here, I love these auto feeders like sky high up there. They're going to drop the pallets from yeah. you know, the, the clouds above down to the fish. Yeah, and then into some refactory lights there. Yeah, yeah. So uh, yeah, these are just some um, eBay Wi-Fi um, feeders. Yes, um, I've had so many feeders go for a, a, a <laughs> little swim in the tank that I thought I'm not going to, um, you know, spend too much money on it. But I, I will be upgrading. I'll be getting the refactory feeder quite soon. Sure. Um, just to integrate with the rest of the system. Yes. Um, I have anthias, so I need to feed a you know a fair few times throughout the day. Sure. Uh, I, I just like I like it. I couldn't really find a spot for them down low that were out of eyesight, and I like to think, keep things quite clean and minimalist. But um, yeah, they, 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 one, they there's a I guess practicality to them as well. They once the the food hits the water, um, it actually enters the water column, and the fish eat it rather yeah. than. Just, just go straight down the wheel. Yeah, no, that's cool. Um, I like that, uh, that that board you've got up there too, that they're mounted to is a good spot just to hide all your power supplies and stuff up there and just keep yeah. things tidy. Yeah, I, I, I hate cables. I, I love seeing um, lights kind of, you know, hanging. I think yes. it's, it's one of the nicer ways to display lights, um, but the cords are always an issue, I find. And <laughs> if you have them running straight off the back of the tank, and I think it kind of takes away from that appeal. So sure. the idea was to kind of tuck everything away up there. It also gives me a chance to um, hide some other power cables. These are also run off power, they're not battery. So oh, nice, handy. They're, um, they're, they're all the power's up, up the top there. Gives them a nice um, and tidy. I've I mean, run that's out of power points down below anyway, <laughs> so I need a, another way. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> provide more power. Uh, the lights, yeah, Reef Factory. Um, these are, so I've got three large and two small of the, the Reef Factory um, Blue. Yeah, Reef Pro Flare, Blue. Pro Blue, yeah. Um, I originally went with Ecotech over the system. They gave probably a little bit too much of a blue hue for me uh, yep. with, with an SPS dominant reef. Um, uh, as soon as I saw these on display at, um, I think it was reef stock, I saw oh, yeah. them for the first time lit up. Um, I knew it was kind of the, the right look that I wanted for this tank, so they were quick to go up yeah, um, nice. then. And what, do you know what sort of par you're getting with these lights over the tank? Yeah, uh, quite a lot. So I run these um, at 70%, yes. uh, which is pretty brutal, to be honest. Like sure. a lot of people who are running some of the reef factory lights struggle to get them over like 40%. So I yeah, gradually okay. <laughs> have got them to 70% with a maximum of 60% whites. Yes. Um, and I get 550 par at this top middle rock here. Yeah, beautiful. Um, and, and quite of... high at the low, like, so the base of the top of this rock here, I'm getting around 400 there as well. So, yeah, yeah. Just um, perfect for high light loving SBS. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, the lights are definitely one of my, my favorite bits of this tank. They, they go, they go quite well. They do what I need. Yeah. And as you say, you don't want too much of a blue pop, um, with SBS. SBS often looks best under a, a, like about a 20,000 Kelvin spectrum, which in the old days is what we used to call blue. Yeah. <laughs> but in, in today, that's almost like daylight um, compared to what a lot of people run. But uh, it really gives the SPS and the fish for that matter. Yeah, well, I love- to really shine. I love my fish and especially some of these darker fish like a purple tang emperor and, and your blue tank, they just get lost in blue lighting. Yeah. Um, they, they, you know, they, you, don't, you just don't appreciate their colors and whatnot. Um, so I want the best of both worlds and 
here I am with um, a much whiter. They, they are the blue variant, but yeah, um, yeah. I just find that they're whiter than most other in the market. So sure. it, 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 it works for me. Works well. And then looking, just stepping down into the tank, I can see uh, these are some Octo flow pumps on the back wall uh, there. Yeah, Octo um, Pulse. Yep. Octo Pulse 4s. Yes. Uh, so these are the newer model which come with the, um, you might see here, they come with the Wi-Fi control. Yeah, very nice. So two here. Um, they come with the Wi-Fi control. Um, so before I used to have to run them off a timer so they would turn off at a certain time at night. Yes. Um, just so I'm not blowing water out of the tank at all, <laughs> at all hours. Um, so now I can kind of adjust um, the flow and, and everything that I need um, and set a, a good schedule with them. They're quite, uh, I quite like the way they've got that nice little angle adjustable. Well, they're 360, and they just, yeah. so, so they call it 360 adjustable, which is kind of what I like off the back of the tank. I wanted to keep, I, I, ha, I did have some guys here. Yes. Um, but I wanted my, all my pumps off the back of the tank. So I, so I could keep this angle clear. Clear? Yes. Um, and it was hard to find a wave maker that was uh, quite low in profile that pumped out a lot of flow and yet still got somewhat hidden along the back wall. Yeah, on the, on the yeah. back wall, which is Definitely. really hard to find. So yeah, I went with them. I, I'm, I, I highly rate them. I think they're a great, great pump. They do the job well. I've heard a lot of good things about them, yeah, where I've not had any first-hand experience myself, but... Um, you don't see them often, apart. Yeah. but um, yeah, I, I'm, for anyone out there looking for, you know, a pump that like this, that um, like I just mentioned, that I, I definitely recommend them. Nice. I do also have the uh, the MP60 up this end, which is a brand new, week only, week old new edition. edition. Yep, yep. Um, it's purely just to kind of keep suspe uh, particles suspended in the water column so they get filtered out. Yep, yep. Uh, like I said, I did. I had a guy at either end. Um, and I, I, it was good. It kept the water flow on the, on the surface of the tank, but not quite throughout yes. the entire tank. So there's a lot of flow in there now. Um, it's, you can see, yeah, looking from the surface, like the, there's a lot of water movement in there. There's yeah. currents going in all directions and pulses back and forth. It's, I mean, it's a bare bottom SBS system. Yeah. You can afford to go crazy with the flow. So it runs um, the reef crest mode, 75% yep. max. Yeah, okay. Um, these are all on individual pulses at 80% yep. at, uh, max. Um, so they all do completely all different things chaos. to it. So it's all, yep. yeah, it's, like you said, yeah, chaos in the tank, Yep. which Perfect. is good. Um, I think it, it's working well now. Um, previously, yeah, I don't think I had enough flow in there. But yeah, okay. I originally only had two pulses, probably, three months ago added the two extra. It's one of those things is, I mean, we're lucky these days with power meters, we can measure light and say, yeah, I need yeah. another lighter, I need to turn them up, turn them down, whatever it is. Flow is something that's just so subjective and yeah. really difficult to measure. So it, it's hard, but particularly with no torch or hammer in there to sort of look at and go, oh yeah, it should be swaying a little bit more or a little bit less. It's, it's difficult. You've got to basically just blast them and uh, hope that uh, you're not pushing the flesh off any SPS. Yeah, yeah. About the measure. Well, there is some that come quite, quite close, like this guy. He, um, he blasts some <laughs> of these corals here on top, but um, they're some of the corals that can probably handle it a they little bit more. Flow, yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, they'll just grow around the flow anyway. If they yeah. don't like that spot, they'll go the other direction. That's right, yeah. Now, one thing I did notice up just behind you there, that yes. this addition on the end here, that's not a standard cave. No, custom made. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, it's a it's a budding special, but it looks quite <laughs> fancy. It it's, looks like it came from the Cade catalogue. It's like a tall boy caddy. Well, it's it's before the um, the new. I think well, are they called caddies? I think yeah, they called yep, a caddy. Yep. It's before they were they came out. I, I built the kind of shelf um, to hold um, turf scrubber, dosing everything in there, and still have um, sump space. Yes. Um, Works a treat. Yeah, the it's um it just it hides a lot of gear, but is still functional. I can still Definitely. get in there and change out the um the dosing containers quite easily. Yeah, uh, the lid here comes off, and I can take the the turf scrubber out and yep, yep. clean that. Um, yeah, and down the bottom is just 
power cables, you know, <laughs> you know how it is. Your friend, the power cable. No, very, very and nice. New addition, the, the smart tester, which is just here. It's yeah. a temporary location for it. Um, I will be building like a, a nice little kind of um, uh, controller board in there that yep. will probably house things like the smart it. tester and things like that yeah, in there. Yeah, very nice. Um, but yeah, that's, I had to have that. I, I think it kind of completes the oh, kind of It fits of the, the look. And as you say, yeah, I mean, you don't really have any other sort of cupboard space in this room. So you either end up cluttering your sump space um, or you have things for the fish tank stored yeah. in another room, which is, you know, not ideal. So that, that's the perfect solution. And it makes the tank look kind of built in, like it fits the spot so nicely. Yeah, it's built in without being built in yeah. somewhat. So yeah. yeah, it kind of finishes off with the level of the tank and, um, it somewhat looks, mimics the doors of the Cade cabinet. It absolutely does, yeah. Um, it's all pretty much just, um, you call it um, connected yes, I know from Bunnings. Stuff. Yep. So it's just little um, little plastic kind of corner pieces that just goes in with aluminium. Yep. Um, pretty easy to really put together. Uh, it took me a day to kind of build the whole thing. Yep. Uh, with just acrylic shelves, just went to a local acrylic place and gave him some sizes and he and he built me some shelves and beautiful doors and whatnot and yeah come up a treat looks fantastic now i did notice speaking of equipment just tucked up behind there we've got a pretty large uv yep. in the system yeah 80 watt pentair yep yep uh that runs so it runs back into the tank directly yes so. okay so it's on its own feed yeah so it, i have my own manifold pump uh, i can dial it in um, with this tap here. It's also got a flow sensor built in oh, at yeah. the back. Uh, I think it's one of those Digiturn ones that you've used yes. before. It's a temporary thing until I find something that's more suited. Sure. Uh, the cable's not quite long enough to kind of have, <laughs> you know, the, the flow sensor on display or anything like that. So I plug it in occasionally and yeah, see yeah, yeah. what see kind of flow I'm getting out of it. Um, but yeah, it's been great. I haven't had it's set up for, um, you know, ick and whatnot. And, yep, yep. So and it's the system. a slower flow rate to attack all the parasites rather than, than sort of water clarity. Well, it's definitely not attacking algae because I, <laughs> I, I clean the glass on this twice a day. With the yeah, that's, that's what happens when you've got a decent fish load and um, high par uh, yep. life. Uh, algae is life and it, yeah, you kind of can't have one without the other, yeah, I guess. So. I'd rather live with the algae on the glass than Ick in the tank. And, oh, I'm <laughs> yeah. sure it's still in there. I don't really believe that you ever really kind of get rid of it. I think yeah. it's something that we all just have to live with. And, I um, agree. I think it's it's possible to have a tank free of it, but it's a lot more difficult to be that yeah. sterile than a lot of people think. I don't quarantine because I believe that to quarantine, you have to be able to do it perfectly yeah i'm the same um i don't trust myself to be able to do it perfectly 100 percent of the time yeah if you do it not perfect just once then it's in your system anyway that's so. right then you're just stressing the fish for yeah. no, no benefit yeah um so i have the uv i have I, I feed well yep um i feed garlic i do um you know vitamins and things like that for the fish to keep them healthy yes um and so far I, so good so far so good yeah, yeah nice nice knock on wood i haven't lost any fish to in um any in a long stretch of time so yeah no that's that's a pretty good sign yeah continue on with the equipment side of things what have we got in the, show you the control board oh, i yeah, know we've touched board. on this before yeah, yeah. quickly um so we've got um main pump manifold pump skimmer um all in the the cabinet here beautiful um this is one of your battery backups lovely um that's sitting in there that kind of it only when we first designed it we were hoping that we'd be able to kind of have the the main pumps um utilize the battery backup as well but then we found out that they're 36 volt yes. so they don't work off that yes so that battery backup is kind of made to continue running the entire tank pumps and all for i think it was eight hours or so yep, yep. um but it'll uh, it'll just keep pumps running for quite a while so currently it's, it's running your flow pumps and stuff like that yeah it runs yep. all the octos yep, um, at yep. the moment it did run the guys when i had them on yep um but not not anymore and i 
haven't connected it yet because it's up the same mp60 easy enough yeah. so we'll get that in the loop too and if you've got flow on that'll keep things running for yep. plenty of time uh in this section Ooh, here this looks fancy so this is um this is just like my little um control board or not control board my monitors um you've got a few things flashing there it's a little bit of a hot day today, so I'm up at 26.9 degrees. <laughs> um, that last one there, that's the TDS meter. I need to recalibrate that. Um, if I had my time again, I probably wouldn't have connected that up in line. It's just yep. kind of plumbed in from the feed that I get from my ATO at the back of the tank. Yes. Um, and it just constantly reads a little yeah. like high, when and I know it's not high. Yeah, yeah, when um, it's a C's air, it reads high. Yeah. Yep. And um, yeah, it also reads my salinity. Yep, 5.9 and my pH. Beautiful. Uh, then we have a Bubble Magus CR500 calcium reactor, which is not actually running any CO2 yet. I'm still dosing on uh, ABC from Aquaforest. It's just kind of connected so I can switch it on at some point. And, and it yep. does its job. Get the media all degassed and everything yep. ready to go. And um, the Aquaforest scrubber. CO2, sorry. Yep. CO2. Yep. Um, and also two Kamoa. Um, oh, you got more hidden up under there. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I see them. And the batteries at the back, and yep. then a ton of cables. <laughs> <laughs> and then the sump. The sump. So. Um, Ooh, wee. So, yeah, quite full. So you can understand why I needed to build the cabin at the end now. Yeah. Um, Where do I start? Uh, so it runs two Octo Varios 8 return pumps, which were the biggest they made. One is purely for return and the other is for the manifold. They have the capacity to push a good 10 to 11,000 litres per hour each. I also have them teed together so they have the ability to take over from each other if I ever need to. As you can probably also likely see in there at the moment, I also went slightly mad and went all out on the plumbing. Uh, plumbing in here with sinking plumbing with a full manifold at the back there um, that kind of I can run all of my equipment off very very nice and then starting where the water enters the sump you've got a nice custom filter roller there yeah dreams plus uh, so Balaji who's uh, a wizard um, designed this so this is uh, this is version two of this so we made a prototype um, probably about eight months ago. Yes. Uh, that ran the standard style of kind of filter mat that you usually see, it sits wet inside yep. the sump. Um, and it was great, but Balaji being Balaji contacted me one day and he said he's got an idea and <laughs> he wants to do it wondered if he, if he could do a version two on um, this uh, filter roller. So it actually works a little bit different to most. It does all of its filtration outside of the water. Okay. So the water flows water in actually. through a baffle, it flows out onto the mat, down through the mat into the water. Yep. Um, and with that, I catch a lot more um, detritus and, and everything. And I have everything flowing through it. So I have a turf scrubber flowing through, back through it. Yep. Um, the main and the emergency flowing through it. So nothing really kind of- Nothing bypasses gets it. too far through it, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's working right. It's it's set up with um, refactory ro uh, medium rolls. Yes. Uh, and it will do everything smaller than the the refactory medium rolls. It just yep. needs spaces so it sits to one okay. side. Yeah, yeah, makes sense. Um, and it um, it auto rolls. It beeps and all kinds of stuff just to let me know that it's <laughs> continuously beeping and um, it's got a adjustment so I can adjust how fast speed, it goes. Yep, when yep. I do a water change, I can turn it off. And uh, the top button is for a reverse. So when I want to take the roll oh, out, that's I flip it into reverse and it just throws the roll back What a good idea, you never see that. Yeah, so. Because it's so tight with the massive sump, but it's still tight in here. Yeah. Um, so to combat that, we, yeah, we had to kind of figure out a way to get everything back out again. And, Done well. You know, yeah, so that works well. And then um, you come across here to some more custom craziness from Dreams Plus again. You've got some uh, media baskets down there and then these cool little uh, stands to, so you can fit basically a double decker in your sump. Yeah, so these stands have actually been cut down. 
Originally, I had the skimmer over there in the middle and the two stands around the outside of the skimmer, but I wanted to change the layout of the sump. Uh, a little bit, so we just cut the, the, the sides off the stands and... Um... Yeah, it just kind of sits there neat like that now. Yeah, it works a treat. In the back, it's just some baskets of your normal media. The normal big W baskets yeah. full, of, full of media. So the first um, reactor that we've got here is a CR, um, a torch, C-torch um, ad fill, 60 yep. or something or whatever it's called. Yep. Um, what are you running in that calc. one? Okay, calc, we'll see, yep. Yeah, yep. so I did stir my calc for a long time. Yes. Uh, I used to find that I would find a lot of undissolved calc come through my tank, a lot of build up on the glass and everything. Yep. And I went away from the, the stirrer and I've just... Just left it uh, sitting in the reactor. Um, and it just kind of continuously drops, um, I think it's 10 litres a day. Okay, yeah, Into the amount. system. Yep. Um, with that, I've just noticed much more stable pH as well. Okay. So the way it used to run was um, it would only top up when my ATO was topping up. Yep. You'd get kind of small, uh, small, uneven doses of calc, whereas now... It's continuous, the same all day. Yep, yep. I leave different. it in there for probably um, six weeks, eight weeks, and then I just... Then I just change the calc media out for, um, for fresh stuff. Gives a nice pH boost. And yeah, yeah. Um, behind that is just the... Um, it's so it will work as a degassing chamber for okay. the, um, for calcium, the reactor. calcium reactor once yeah, it's yep. switched on. It's just got magnesium media in there at the moment. Sure. Yep. I'll top it up with some uh, calcium media once, once that goes live. If it, if it needs it. If it needs it, yeah. And then you've got a nice little trio of aquaforous reactors in there. Yeah. Honestly, I mean, that's beautiful plumbing. Yeah. Um, it took me a long time to kind of figure that out and um, a few attempts and a, <laughs> a lot of pipe. I but, can imagine. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I wanted kind of, obviously I'm, I have a lot of manifold um, ports, but I, I wanted to kind of run these off one port and I'd be able to adjust flow, turn off flow to certain ones as I need it. So yep. at the moment, my nitrates are not my biggest issue. So I don't even have the ZO turned on in the middle. Yes. So I've just got the um, carbon and the FOSS uh, minus running. Yes. And obviously they need different flows through them. Um, yes. So the taps kind of adjust the flow and dump straight back into the tank. And, yeah, beautiful. Um, yeah, it works well. Very nice. And then the skimmer, we touched on the big octo there. Yeah. You've got, you've got a nifty little uh, attachment on the top here. Yeah, um, octo 220S, uh, elite 220S. Um, it's, uh, it's been a great skimmer and I, I really can't get it powered. Like it's still running on the uh, lowest setting. Yeah, right. Yeah. Um, it produces sludge like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, it's got some nice collection in there right now. Yeah, that was cleaned yesterday, so it's um, you know, it's doing a, a good job. Definitely. Um, the the little basket on top. This is a little design between myself and Adrian Yap. Adrian, the three D printing master. Yeah, he's uh, been amazing with this build. He's built me some some really cool little bits and pieces all of the the dosing racks this cool little um uh dosing uh line holder at the back there yep, which you might yep. be able to get in and see <laughs> it's, uh, it's tricky to see but it is in there yep 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 um so he's building a ton of stuff this was the latest this was only last week um being at the front of the house as you walk through the door if that collection cup is full, <laughs> uh, you, you get a little bit of a uh, sure, a little bit of a hit of um, you know, yeah, of nastiness. Um, so the idea was, uh, if it draws through carbon, it's um, it's going to reduce the smell. Definitely. Um, we, I, I think midnight one night, I sent Adrian a drawing, <laughs> thinking that he might, you know, under, roughly understand what I what I'm looking for, and he, three days later, he said. He's, I've finished. Here it is. Come pick it up. So <laughs> the master that he is. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, and um, I, I, I think it works. Oh, this is, you know, I, I, I'm kind of accustomed to smell. It was more when yeah, visitors come in for sure. Um, but I feel like it's working. It's been well, it can't hurt. I'm sure it's not going to. Definitely not going to make it smell worse. It'll only fix it or do nothing. So yeah. Um, and then 
tucked away just next to it is the KH Keeper. Yes, yes, KH Keeper um, up there. It's currently showing that I'm out of range. I'm slightly above, uh, which is better than being below, I feel, because yep. I, I run quite a, a lower end um, KH. Sure. Um, but that's yeah only because I've just changed over solutions and whatnot. So that's one of the benefits of the refactory unit is that not only do you get the push notifications and obviously the full access from your app anywhere, yeah. but even just a quick glance in the cabinet like that, we can look at it and see that it's got a red light, not yeah. a green light, um, and that means that uh, there's something wrong, either an error or it's just as you say out of range. Yeah. So um, yeah, but it'll talk. I have the uh, refactory doses. So it'll talk. Yep. It'll start just start dosing less um, yep. solution. It'll, it'll bring stop. itself back in the range. Yep. I don't really have to think about it. Um, I just calibrate it. Yep. Once every two, three months, and clean the probe probably once every two weeks. And it's been do its thing. Saved my life a few times. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Nice, nice. Well, that's a pretty impressive uh, roundup of of equipment. This is a super, super tidy sum. This is my little um for acclimating fish. I just oh, nice. Off yeah, another yeah. manifold and- Yep, you can just drip the water in there. Drip the water in, makes it a lot easier. Definitely does, yeah. It's a clever way to do it, a little John Guest tap. But um, as impressive as the under the hood is, we've got to have a, a chat about the livestock, both your fish and the coral in the system, because you've got some beauties in there and um, we've got we've just got to go over them. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, I'll start with uh, probably the main guy, the boss of the tank, the emperor. Yes. Um, yeah, he's definitely the big guy. He, he loves to um, knock over digi and, and break off bird's <laughs> nest and all kinds of stuff, but uh, I wouldn't have it any other way. I, I love him. I think he's probably the highlight of the tank. I've always wanted one. Yes. Um, yeah, he, and, and for a fish that big that could... He could quite easily take a chunk out of another fish. Docile. Yes. Um, I don't really have too much chasing or anything like that, which is good. Yep. But, um, yeah, uh, I've got a, I've also got a, I don't know where he's gone, a blue face angel. He's laying yeah. low. Yeah, he'll come out shortly. <laughs> uh, he's gone around that side, there he is, yep. Um, yeah, he's another favorite, um, one that I always uh, wanted in SPS tank. Here he comes. Um, I've got the, yeah. Bitcoin here. That's it, the yellow tangs. Um, he's nice. Adrian, Adrian Yaps. So um, Adrian shut, shut his tank down. Yes. Um, I picked up a few fish off him. Um, a couple have since um, died. Yes. Uh, there was a really big blue tang and um, a powder blue. Um, but yeah, the yellow and the coal tang. I saw the coal before. His. Beautiful fish, yeah. Yeah. Um, he's hiding at the back. Yellow eye coal. <laughs> Um, yeah, once I, I introduced, it's probably silly of me, I introduced the gold rim tang and um, the powder blue and him just kind of fought to the death and he won. Yeah, yeah. And he was a fair bit smaller, which is um, sad, but it's, it's tang, tang nature, that's how it works. Yes, unfortunately, they don't always play nice. Um, I've also got a big uh, sail fin. He was the first fish in the tank. Been in there since day one after cycle. Yep. Um, First it. fish in the tank was a tang. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was actually, so at that time I was doing, um, I, I had my own business doing some maintenance and um, there was a guy shutting his tank down and he's like, what should I do with this guy? And I'm yep. like, I'll take him off your hands. So yep, yeah, yep. He, was, uh, he was the first one in. Uh, beautiful um, fish. Purple tang. I've got... Um, a live tail uh, pair of angels. Of angels, yep, yep. Male so and females. There's a male there. there, females hiding at the back here. <laughs> I'll get some footage on screen to overlay. Uh, what else? I've got uh, the rabbit fish. Added when I had a bit of an algae um, issue. Yep. Um, and he's just managed to kind of keep things, you know, in check. He likes to go around and pick um, everything, yeah. And also the. Uh, Magnificent fox face. Yes, yeah, I did see him in there. Um, and then John down there, yeah, yeah. So there's three um, different, well, they're not, not actually different, but there's two different types of maroon clownfish in there that were actually in a nano in the other room with some NEMS, 
we shut that down and brought them in here. Yep. Um, and they've since quadrupled in size. <laughs> As maroons tend to do. Um, and I have uh, a Picasso. I think it's a Picasso. There was a pair. Um, but uh, yeah, one, one passed away. So he or she is um, the only one left. And somewhat kind of mixed with the other two at times. And sometimes they fight, but um, that's all part of it. Indeed. And then um, uh, a bunch of uh, Lyotale Anthias and some Cronus. I haven't had the best luck with Anthias and Cronus. Okay. Um, I put a batch of uh, 15 Lyotale Anthias in there. I think there's eight or nine now. Yes. Um, what seems to happen is I, I get them quite at a, a smaller size. One turns male and then just goes on a killing spree. Yeah. Um, and Chromis just either like to go for, uh, you know, they like to get tangled up in the, uh, the wave makers or jump. So, yeah, okay, well. Yeah, I've, I've probably put 40 Chromis through this tank and um, I've got 15 or so now. So, Brutal. Yeah, Brutal, yeah. yeah it's not, it doesn't help that I don't have a a net on top which is coming yeah that's it's tough particularly with i mean the beautiful rimless cade tanks they look great but uh without any sort of bracing on there yeah um just makes it very very easy for a fish to jump yeah i um highly recommend anyone going rimless that you at least get some kind of euro brace because even the splashing from yeah the uh the water like if, I, if you run as much flow as i do you can see it's, yeah. it's almost coming over the top and sometimes yeah. over flows. Flirting with the edge there. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, fish just, you know, they love to jump. So. Just love to yeet their way out. Yeah. Um, what else? On top of that, I've got, I think we counted probably 150, 200 snails. Okay, um, yeah, wow. Heaps. Tro yeah, trochus and turbos. Yep. Um, I feel sorry for it, but I, I've got um, three or so of the sand sifting starfish that need to come out. Oh, poor they, buggers. They're sifting nothing. Sifting the remains of the sand. <laughs> um, and I do have some some cool uh, shrimp. I've got some purple-bodied um, coral banded shrimp. Oh, yeah. That you just never see. Okay, they um, lay low. They, they, if you look behind somewhere there at the back, you'll see some some hiding there. <laughs> sure, uh, I'll take your word for yeah. it. And then, yeah, some peppermint shrimp were put in there to deal with some aptasia at one point. That, that problem's um, since been taken yeah. care of. They all come out at night. At and, you know, if I come down in the middle of the night and take a quick look, I'll see them doing their thing. Yeah. Uh, nice. Now, we've got to talk about coral now. Your favourite bit. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, you, you've seen my sort of build. I love the infrastructure and all of the work that goes into a tank. And yep. fish are obviously are what makes a fish tank. But uh, yep. for me, coral is uh, something that I do absolutely love to see because it doesn't matter if everyone has the same piece and every tank it's different. Yep. Um, and, and you've got no shortage of coral in this system to, to yeah. go over. It's pretty well stocked. Um, I've actually stopped yep. buying. <laughs> frags and, and, and whatnot. Um, but if I see something that I like, I potentially move something to get a bit of room for it. Yes. Um, so recently a few things have kind of moved around into different spots. Um, if things are dying, like you might. You can see over here, I have a paletta pink tip that is slowly whittled away. So I've just glued another pink tip over the top of it. But um, yeah, starting from this end, I guess I've got, I've, I like the idea of like a little bit of a digi garden. Yeah, um, yeah. Which is, it's only this small because the emperor likes to keep it. <laughs> He's like a <laughs> bit of a lawnmower. Yeah, he yeah, comes in and just knocks branches off. And, for sure. Um, so it seems to kind of stick it around this kind of level, even though That's good. it's it manageable. should be triple this size at the moment. <laughs> so you got a couple of blues, a pink and a bubble gum in there? Yep. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah. Um, this is the best bubble gum that I've managed to keep in, in any of my tanks in the past. Usually yep. you either don't get quite get the bright orange or you don't get the yellow tips in this tank for whatever reason, um, really kind of taken off quite nicely. Yeah, it looks great. Um, uh, one, uh, one of my show pieces here is the, the strawberry shortcake. Um, yep. It's pretty common in the, um, in the hobby now, but that thing's just 
it just keeps changing. It, it was super pink at one point, now it's fluoro yellow with pink tips. It, <laughs> at one point it was really hairy, um, it had really long polyps and so it's always, it's just forever changing which is quite cool. Um, and the purple Harita here, I love that just because it kind of does, it just dances a little bit in the, yeah. in the flow. Um, but yeah, some of the highlights, I guess, um, I really quite, I'm, I'm into my blues. Yep. So I've got a couple of contrasting blues here. I'm, I don't know if they, either of those have names, um, but I, I, I just find blue uh, mesmerizing. Um, For sure. Got a couple of pieces. So this is probably the high end up the top here. Uh, I've got a gumdrop uh, mini colony here that's really starting to take off. Yeah, it looks great. Um, Walt Disney on the left here. Um, uh, Orange Passion, I think it is, right in the middle. Yep. Uh, cherry Bomb. Um, something was attacking it. Uh, it started to peel up from the back and recede and, and everything. So I thought I'd better get it off there. Um, I took it down, um, moved it to a lower spot and fragged it up a little bit. It seems to be, it's just taken on another colour now. Yeah, nice. Um, the, uh, the big Monty that I've got here, this is my indicator if the system is doing well or not. It's good when the polyps are out. Things everything's are good. fine. Yep. Uh, if they're attracted and it goes like a olive green colour, then I've got a problem with the system. So sure, sure. It's usually a phosphate or nitrate imbalance or something like that. Okay. Um, this blue, I think it's, a, is it a stag? Yeah, stag-like like thing. Yeah, um, yeah. was a cheap piece that I picked up that's just it's stunning. Um, I nice. love the blue, the, the deep blue in it. Yeah, I think and then the bright blue tips. Yeah. Beautiful piece. Um, another uh, Walt Disney here. Walt Disney. Walt Disney, just here. Yep. I like to kind of try things in different areas, so I often get pieces and halve them and put them in different locations. So I've got doubles and triples of a lot of corals inside the tank. Yep. Um, just to see how they do with different light and flow, because sometimes they can end up looking like completely different corals. Yeah, then, um, well, then it effectively is a different coral. Yeah, and, and some of them have worked out that way. Yep. This here. This piece, most people that come and look at the tank really like this. It's a uh, pearl berry. It's definitely one of the favorites for most people that come and visit the tank. And I've got to say, it's one of my favorites too. The colors on it are astounding. It's in a prime location there. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's just, the colors in it are just spectacular. Absolutely. Um, bit of uh, Dallas at the yeah, back Dallas there. Yeah, Dallas around the back there, looking nice and bright too. Nice yeah. Extension looks great. Um, and I've, I've managed to make myself a little bit of a bird's nest garden just, just here that I want to yeah. kind of extend on. I think I want to get some pink, dalla, uh, pink bird's nest and a few other colors to yes. kind of fill it out. Uh, I think it'll, um, I don't know, it just, it's, it's a bit of a feature, I think. Now, you, it's one of the first things you notice when you walk through it the door. It looks cool the way they're all growing so tightly into each other. Yes. Yeah. And they all cool. started from simple frags just one you know one little clipping yes um they've turned into that so it's good yeah nice um, i quite like the um contrasting colors you got down here with the um green goblin and the uh, tnt up here as well you got the bright red and the bright green right near each other with a kind of an orange monty in between so you got the full traffic yeah. light going on well the idea here was going to be like the Anna anacapora difference of like these um thinner branching type corals yes um, and then, yeah, I, I just, I just put the bird's nest in there just because I didn't have anywhere else <laughs> for it at the time and they've just taken off and would probably more than likely take over that real estate, but, um, uh, I'm, I'm not upset at all no. with it at the moment. And you might also see a couple of heads of captive spawned torch in the tank. I didn't actually put them there. They've just started growing on the rock, which is pretty cool. I did see that up in there. I didn't want to uh, embarrass you and say, hey, you told me this was SBS only, and I can clearly see Torch just there. But on, on the back wall too. There is too, yeah. Just a little yeah. back there. But it's been a long, long time since I've had Torch in this tank. And I don't know, at one point I was cleaning the tank or whatnot and um, just saw a few, a few little green things staring back at me. <laughs> and. Um, yeah, I, I couldn't tell what it was until more recently when you can clearly see that they're, they're actually a torch. They're a um, torch. It's an episode cool. of the X-Files. Uh, I don't know how they'll ever come out because they're 
well and truly in buried deep inside a crevice <laughs> in there. So it looks good, I guess. If yeah. they've been going, if they've made it this far, yeah, I would say they've gone through the hardest part. So that surely yeah. they're, they're, they can make it if they've come this far. Yep. Now this, I must admit, I do love this end of the tank. Um, the view from here, the rock skate is really nicely layered up there. So you can just see multiple angles of different types of SBS just. Well, I put a bit of thought into the scape. Um, I feel like a lot of time before I've just dumped a bunch of rock in a tank yep. and just went, Coral's going to take over anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yep. Which essentially it does, but... Yeah, but you can give it a platform to... Yeah. the I success. The idea that I've got with the rock in this tank is... Um, if you look from the top down, you don't see any of the base. So each, each um, void is kind of... You know, there's an arm, there's a rock kind of reaching yeah. out with coral. Got and also when you look from that end, it kind of cascades. It does, yeah. That's, that's what I really like about up here is you've just got, yeah, you can see the SBS for the entire length of the tank, which just looks beautiful. So once it's fully kind of built in, it... Layers upon layers of... Kind of... Coral. The idea and That's the, the dream, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that's um, how I want, that's what I want on my tombstone, you know, diet upon <laughs> layers upon layers of coral. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, so yeah, it's, um, it's coming along. I think it's, uh, I think it's probably a little bit behind for, a, for the one year mark. Like I would like to see maybe a little bit more growth. I think coloration, I'm, I'm quite, I'm, I'm there at the moment, but I'd like to see a little bit more growth out of it soon. I think it's um, coming along just fine. But yeah, it's, uh, it's particularly on, on SBS the, tanks. They, they take time, you know, it's yeah. LPS has the benefit of you put the piece in, sure it will grow, but it's not really about growth. Yeah. It's about just keeping it bright and alive where SBS, you got to give it time to grow and, and settle yeah. in and most of these have gone in as frags it well, takes time 90 percent are frags uh, there's only a very few pieces that actually come in here as like small colonies yeah yeah um so yeah everything had like and it's it's weird that some have come in here as frags and are now larger than some of the colonies that went in at the same time so um, they're happy, they, they'll grow, and um, I'm, I'm seeing it more in some areas than others, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm happy so far. It's one of those, it's an exponential thing. The bigger they are, then the faster they grow, so. Well, I'm having some issues. Uh, you can probably see here, I did have a fox flame, which is now right up the end here, growing into uh, another coral they touched. They both kind of, they haven't bleached, but they just have lost all color and everything. Yeah. He's only just starting to regain his colour back now and the fox flame is just starting to get his green tips back. But like, I'm going to see that in this tank because they're... they're, they're I, love, I love these Montes down here. Yeah, <laughs> growing around. Growing around you um, could say they're fighting for a bit of turf there. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, there, there is definitely going to be a lot of war in this tank, but I think that's half ongoing part of the hobby because I mean you, yeah. you can't keep sticking corals and you run out of space so you end up becoming a bit of a bonsai artist and start yes. putting things back and trying to get them to live harmoniously. Yep. I did actually have a little frag tank in the corner here. Yes. But I just felt like I could give only time to one or the other. Yeah, and yeah. That's right. It got I neglected am, and yeah. I'd focus on this one. This one got neglected. And yeah. yeah. It was, so yeah. it was just, and they were plumbed in together and anyway, I just thought I'll just, um, I don't really like fragging and I don't really need to at this stage. Um, but some of it just seems to happen with the fish knocking things <laughs> over and yeah, you may as well stick them on a tile and save them at that point. And even like when you, I do sometimes scrub the back wall. It's, it's quite clean now. It, it, it does grow uh, a fair bit of Coraline quickly. Yep. there. Yep. Um, and I had done it for the first time last week. Uh, in probably about six months uh, <laughs> and it was it was very difficult without kind of hitting corals and knocking things off and yeah, all that task. kind of stuff so I think there's going to be quite a bit more coralline growing on the back wall from here on in <laughs> it's just yeah it's it's it looks excellent it makes everything pop out more but it's um it's not an easy thing to it's do a hard task definitely yeah all right, that's some incredible fish and coral you got in there. Tell us what sort of parameters are you chasing to get things looking that good? Um, my main goal is all around alkalinity. Um, sure. 
I aim for 7.5. Uh, with the KH Keeper, I probably only maybe, um, it, it may slide down to about maybe 7.3 to up to about 7.8, but yep. 7.5 is the goal. Um, I, I've i stopped testing calcium magnesium. Sure. I believe it's around 460 and 13, 1360. Yes. Um, but yeah, it's, I, I, I equal part dose, so um, if, if my out's in range, I believe that the, the rest will kind of fall into place. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, my nitrates and phosphates um, at the moment are kind of up and down a little bit. Okay. Um, I did used to run a, a, like a, a zero kind of nutrient system in this, so yep. almost zero on both for yes. a long time. Um, that used to be the trend. That's what we all yeah, sort of chased. It was definitely it's and it's it seems to be like the the way things are heading at the moment for a yep. lot of a lot of people in their tanks. I just couldn't have good decent success color growth. Yeah. Um. I'll, like, I find I just, it's. I think you probably do get like five percent more color, but yeah. it's just so close to the ragged edge that it's just not worth it. Uh, yeah. It just wasn't for me. Um. So I I have bumped nitrates up. Uh, yep. And I like them at around 15 to 20, yep. wow, which okay. to some people is astronomical. Yeah, and an SBS only system, not a number yeah. you normally hear as a target. Um, I, I just prefer it at that. I have a lot uh, less issues. Yep. Um, phosphate, it, it, it comes and it goes. Sure. Um, as the GFO, GFO kind of diminishes, uh, it raises. Uh, at the moment, I believe I tested yesterday with the smart tester at uh, 0.14. Yep. Um, I'm happy with that. Yeah, so it's pretty well in yeah. line, I guess, with, with you don't want to be ultra low in phosphate when you're yeah. up around 15, 20 in nitrates. So it yeah. keeps things in balance. I aim for 0.1. That's, yep. that's my yep, yep. happy happy medium. especially I aim too, actually. Yeah. yeah, especially with the higher nitrates, I wouldn't want... A super low in no, phosphate, exactly. high in nitrate. Yep. I think that's yep. a recipe for disaster. So yeah, they're, they're the they're the parameters that kind of um, that do fluctuate a little bit at yep. the moment. But I believe with the smart tester, I'll be able to kind of really yeah. get that in tight. Fortunate um, enough to have one of the fancy uh, reef factory smart testers there, and you've yeah. got that monitoring your phosphate at the moment. A phosphate, yes. Yep. I do have the magnesium kit. I haven't put it on there. Like I said, I'm not too. Not two phase. Yeah. Yep. Uh, the end goal for that will be that um, I have two two testers. Yes. One for phosphate, one for nitrate, uh, and then the plan will be maybe on weekends as I if I do my maintenance, um, I'll switch out the cartridges for a calcium and a magnesium. See where I'm at. Yep. Um, just so it the, it logs the data in the in the Reef sure. Factory app. Yep. Um, and then put my phosphate and nitrate ones in there to do daily tests and yep. And, yep. and and dose accordingly and whatever else I might do. Of course, I yeah. may add, I've got two spare lines on one of the doses. Yes. So I could uh, with my GFO, I could probably add a phosphate my um, uh, a phosphate reducer uh, liquid form just to really kind of really pinpoint it. But I'm happy with the GFO for now. It yeah. does its job. Yep. Um, as well as the turf scrubber. So that turf scrubber, I find it does nothing for phosphates. Okay. Uh, it's it does quite a lot for nitrates. Yeah. Okay. Um, I if I, I at one point I was running it for sixteen hours, uh, and that's when I could get it down to zero. It right, would just right. completely strip nitrates from the system. Yep. Uh, and I'd have to harvest every week. Yep. Yep. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> like a pretty crazy like. <laughs> handfuls of the stuff you yeah, know? yeah it's a big uh turf scrubber too it's the clear water 300 so okay. good for two three thousand liters yep um and yeah i would just take handfuls of that stuff out now at the moment i believe i've got it i think six hours okay. so at night when yeah, i'm in so bed it turns itself on and it's really just there off. for a little bit of a ph stabilization and yeah. a little bit of nutrient export but yep um i like high ph uh, I, I, I like it up at around the 8.4. Yes. Um, I, I don't seem to always be able to keep it there, uh, even with, so I, I, I do the, um, the, the scrubber and I also do um, the, the calcosser, mm -hmm. but it like, it kind of maxes out, I'm, what am I at, 8.2, 8.14 at the moment. Yes. Um, 
So it does kind of hang around at that 8.2 mark. I'd like to get it up a little bit higher, but it is what it is. I'm not going to complain nah. too much about it. I've got a, another battle on my hands when the calcium reactor comes yeah, online then and people will drop a bit up. then for sure. Yeah. Um, so the plan, the reason why I don't have the calcium reactor on board at the moment is I really don't want to go like the Way Pro or yep. Milwaukee or anything like that. So I'm waiting for the reef factory to bring out the smart um, switch, the yes. switcher. Yep. So you can use. So it. then I can use the pH probe in that and yep. have the uh, the smart switch turn on and yep. off the yep. CO2. And then I'm kind of fully integrated in one, one app, one yep. product, um, yeah, and it sense. all talks to each other. Yeah. Um, plus, I don't really have. I, I don't really need it at the moment. Uh, I was dosing 200 mil of Aquaforest Pro okay. A, B, and C. Yep. I've gone to the the self mixers. Okay. Which is a much less potent mix yes so i'm dosing near 450 mil a day of that stuff yep, yep. Um, but that's really kind of in turn for when the calcium reactor does come on board um you know i've got a cheap and easy method to kind of still keep parameters where i need the, them to be at yeah yep. um and it will just kind of supplement whatever the calcium reactor is doing um yeah so on top of uh the dosing that i I do um, for calcium magnesium out. I dose power, uh, Aquaforest Power Elixir. Yep. Uh, Forty mil a day, uh, and I, I I just dump it all in one one hit. Yep. Yep. Um, That's that fluoro coloured stuff that you see. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's um. Yeah, it's fluoro. So I, I dump it straight into the pump, and then it pumps into the, so into the tank. Right. Yep. Um, and I since using that, um, I've seen some really good colour enhancing and everything. Um, so it's an amino and, and uh, vitamins. Mm -hmm. um, I do, on top of that, do dose some extra aminos. Um, and also, I do a, a bit of a mix. So each day, um, so one day I might do like some rotifers with some aminos. Uh, the next day I might do like um, plankton elixir. Uh, okay. I might do some phyto. Um, so I kind of change it each day. Um, I also do do the growth boost, the pure food, and the power food. Yeah, right. Um, so I add them into the mix each day to change it up and yep. keep the system kind of guessing. And um, hey, you know, it's not, not the same. I think if you do the same thing all day, every day, it, it just becomes like normality yeah yeah you know and and the ocean the reefs aren't doing that yes so i kind of change it up a little bit and um, feed a few different things all the time um on top of that uh so on my last icp i was a bit low on strontium fluorine uh, iron and um manganese yep uh so i dose um I do the micro e for man, uh, for iron and, and some of the metals and stuff, but the rest there. Uh, that's the garlic oil that I use for the with the fish food to yep. help boost their immune system. Um, and I do. I wish I didn't have to. <laughs> A I little do, preventative dose of yeah. or maintenance dose of acro eating. Flat worm, flat worm yeah, X. Removal. Um, yep. I, I, I'm not 100% certain if I have flatworm in here. Sure. Um, it is a purely preventative kind of thing. I, I think that I've seen some, some bite marks here and there. It could be something completely yeah, else, and I sure. hope it is. But yeah, that for now is just a prevent, hopefully, yeah. any eggs or anything like that Definitely. that may be in the system. Yep, um, yep. I feed quite heavily the fish, um, so I do a mix of um I, I actually buy some quite large krill pieces for the okay. for the bigger fish yes and they're they're like little mini prawns they're quite yeah, large yeah. um mysis um brian uh i do a lot of the liquid foods aquaforest liquid foods so uh the the veggie um the veggie mix yeah liquid veggie liquid veggie mysis rotifers um, so I mix all of that in, like I said, and it's, it's something different each night kind yep. of thing as well. Yep. Um, so Plenty of variety. Yeah, lots of variety for the tank. Uh, I will, 
I'll go through this um, this course for here and then do another ICP, yep. see where things are at. Every, everything come back really good in the last ICP, which is probably about three weeks ago. Okay. Right where I kind of need them to be or yep. where I'm happy with them to be. Yes. Um, just These are just kind of topping up to yeah, kind of yeah. get them happy in the green. For sure. Right in the middle of the green. Um, yeah, maintenance-wise, I... I like to do a if if needed. Yep. I don't always if I don't need to, I won't do it. Um, every two weeks, a water change. Okay. I use um, at the moment. I use the Aquaforus Hybrid, uh, and what I found so I've, I I was using the Aquaforus Reef Salt. Yes. I've moved to the Hybrid, and what I found with the Hybrid Salt is it's kind of helping reduce nitrates in the system which means in turn I'm doing less water changes as well. Yeah, okay. Um, so, and I also like quite high nitrates. So, um, yeah, I do 250 litres every two weeks, yep. um, thereabouts. Uh, I, will, I will let it go to a month if I have to. Yeah, for sure. Um, so you mentioned about doing your water changes and I couldn't help but uh, take a quick sneak peek out here at your uh, mixing station because it's a pretty fancy looking setup you've got here. Can you walk us through it? Yeah, so um, for a long time I did do natural seawater and there was just a giant IBC here. Yep. Um, I, I do water my water, water changes with this big Kasha. I don't know what it pumps out, but I can do, <laughs> I can do water changes quick, like yeah, 10 nice. minutes kind of thing. Beautiful. Um, so, yeah, so I do RO. Um, it's, I've got a 400-gallon oh, per day yep. system, so it pumps out... A fair bit. Quite a bit of water, yeah. Um, pumps, so this is just for RO, 265 litres. Yes. Um, these are from a company called AdMerch. Uh, I've had a lot of people ask me about them, where do you get them, how do you find them, how much are they? Um, they cost me about $300 each. Yep. Um, I have noticed since that they've been on and off the website, sure. um, so they're not the easiest thing to find. Yep. Uh, they do come in smaller ones too, I think like 200 litres or whatever. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, so that's my RO, and then this is my salt mixing. Um, so the way that it works is um, my pump, which I've got just a little Mantis 4000 or whatever. Beautiful. Open this tap, pump the water into this tank, yep. add my salt. Um, then I can close that tap off, open this one, and it just circulates and it mixes. And I usually do that kind of overnight. Um, but I have found with this salt that I can have it ready like within two hours. Um, through winter, I have to heat it. Through summer, I don't bother. Um, and then I just attach to this tap here with my pump. Pump straight back into the tank and it pumps in 200, 250 litres in about 10 minutes. So it makes, uh, for me, I thought, yeah, I'll only ever do water changes if it's easy. Uh, I find that I just seem to neglect maintenance oh, if it's hard and takes up, like, life's tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm busy as it is, so if, yeah. if it's too time consuming, it just won't get done. So I thought if I spend the money, I do it right, um, it will just make things a lot easier. I even saw on the display tank, you got a sneaky little mark there, a little 250 liter indicator there, so you know where to drain oh, out. That's, that's more just for saving my own ass to be <laughs> to be honest with you there's a few times i've accidentally pumped out more than what i can pump back yes, in and then you got to frantically mix gotta, them up it wasn't so bad when i had the ibc with uh, natural seawater yep. but now that i can only make 250 liters at a time um yeah it just kind of it's that fail safe um i will I, so i do siphon with these things that i've made these little elbows yep. so i, I will probably cut one of these down so they're exactly at that yeah. 250 litre mark so that I can walk away, do whatever I do and not forget and have yeah, the tank yep. drain completely. Yep. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. And um, I've just got a T on my RO line in. So th this in the tank, there's a little float valve. So yep. um, it just fills up until it's full. But I, I've got a T that comes off and this just, I use this to fill up my ATO at the back. Oh, yeah. Um, so it's just a long hose, I sit it in the back and it fills itself kind of thing. Um, that's, that's really about it. I, I've got multiple pump points, yep. um, so I can fill, I seem to be able to fill buckets and yeah, yeah. clean and stuff. There's nothing worse than 
having to pump water out of a drum. Yeah. I just so I can just fill a bucket easily. Yeah. <laughs> um, done, yeah, and store everything down here. So all my aquaforest bits and pieces are down here. Um, over there in that big mess is my little um, station where I hold all my calcium and do dosing stuff. And uh, beautiful. Yeah, and that's um, that's about it. Apart from that, drain. I don't have an auto drain on the skimmer cup, which is I thought about it, um, but <laughs> I, I don't mind getting in there and Just spraying that out every now and then with the empty hose. The skimmer cup, clean the glass. Yeah, the plants at the front love it. <laughs> um, uh, six months, you know, I I routinely do pumps and, and and stuff like that. Probably once a month. Wave makers, they, I grow that much coralline that these um, octos were like halving in power. Yeah, they uh, with would, the yeah. amount of um, you know it's getting a little bit restricted. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Um, but they're really easy to kind of break down and clean, which is which is handy as well, which is what you want in a pump. Yes. Um, apart from that, I do do like a bit of a sump clean. I like a clean sump. I think sure. if your sump's clean, your, your tank's quite clean. Um, so like I'll, I'll take the, the bio balls and everything out and kind of, you know, yeah, clean them in, the, in their own water and things like that and yep. um, do everything like that. Um, apart from that, like I have no sand. The sand was... I did originally have sand in this tank. Sure. And I, yeah, you and I had a chat about it. Like you're, <laughs> you're telling me to keep it and I wanted to get rid of it. Yeah, um, I'm a big sand fan, but I must admit the cade with the white bottom, it looks, it yeah, looks fine. Yeah. If it wasn't, if it didn't have that white bottom, I, I wouldn't have done it. Yep. Um, but at that time, I only had the two octos and the, and, the, and the guys on it, and the sand was at the back of the tank most of the time. Yeah, okay. Um, there's still patches of sand in there. It's impossible to get it all out. <laughs> Eventually, one day I might. Um, but yeah, with a bare bottom and the f amount of flow that I've got running in there, um, I don't really have to siphon sand or clean or stir up sand or anything like no, that. No, that's it. Um, so I don't have much else um, maintenance wise. Yeah, it's great. Um, it's a fairly clean, I like to keep it clean. So I'm constantly just doing little bits and pieces to yep. keep it running nice and clean. Um, I don't really know how long the rolls last yet. Yes. So this this um, filter roll has only been running maybe a month now. Okay. Um, and I actually, when setting this up, I actually kind of went through half a roll. I made a yeah, mistake just, and yeah, it just yeah. rolled half a roll. <laughs> um, so yeah, this is kind of, uh, we're not really sure where we're at with, with this roll. Um, I haven't used the reef factory rolls before. I've, yep. On the previous model, I used the um, Red Sea ones, and okay. they were pretty good. I'd get maybe two months yep. um, out of a roll. I think I'll probably get maybe more out of this one. Yeah, nice. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's about it for maintenance. Fantastic. Um, I, like I said before, I used to like scrubbing the back wall, which would probably be a monthly thing, but. I think that was the last time that I did that. <laughs> the last just, time it's going to happen. I, I don't want to break any more, snap any more corals off. And like, I don't want a frag tank in the, in the tanks. So yeah, yeah, just let them grow. Let it, let it do its thing now. And That's it. Coral eye, it doesn't look the worst. It's not the worst thing in the world. No, of so. course not. Well, yeah. and speaking of letting the tank do its thing, what, any future plans for the system? Any fish, corals or anything or equipment changes? I mean, calcium reactor may come online at some stage. Yeah. Um, of it, like I said, the, the other smart tester and, and the things yes. around the calcium reactor. Uh, I'm pretty I'm pretty happy. Like this is only a new purchase, the MP60. Yep. I was umming and ahhing on what wave maker to to add to the system. I'm I'm really happy with how the flow is now. Yeah, um, integrates really nicely in your little uh, cabinet on the side there. Yeah, it tucks in, it's nicely out of the way. No and, and, the, and the back's hidden in here, like you don't yeah. even see it, like when you open the door. Exactly. And, yeah. Um, it was really the only option for this end of the tank because these ones, you know, ten centimeters of, of cord hanging out into the tank is. Not yeah, a deal. it's not so noticeable. But you know, something hanging all the way in, halfway down. Yeah. And I was even probably going to mount it a little bit lower to suspend more off the bottom. I think yes. halfway is good. Um, so, so I'm pretty happy. I, I might, um, I'm going to add another smart tester. Uh, 
and yeah, I'm not really not really sure. Fish wise, there's a couple a couple of fish I'd like to add. Um, maybe a couple more angels. Yeah, cool. Uh, I'd like to maybe get. Um, I, I had a flag fin in here, in, yes. and um, he. I don't know what how he got. I found him attached to one of the pumps one morning. Yep. I don't know if he got bullied or not, but I'd like to add another one in again. Um, I really love the look of a good school of chromis or anthias, but with all the hassle and, and troubles I've had with them, <laughs> yeah, you've had I'm a tough not run. sure if I will or you've not. You've got decent numbers of chromis in there as is now, yeah. so yeah, let them um, do their When thing. I had like 20 or 30 in there, it was really, it was yeah, a really yeah, nice okay. kind of... I can imagine. Um, I'd love a powder blue, but I'm not going to risk that either with the, the gold rim now. Yes. Uh, potentially something like a, a gem tang. Yep. Uh, I am waiting on my flame angel to come in. Okay, um, nice. Yeah. Uh, that would be a nice addition. Yeah, yeah. I, um, and then, yeah, it, it all depends um, with, you know, money-wise and things and how everything's kind of settling in. I'd like to do an Achilles too, but... Sure. So it's a good price tag to add in and just have tag aggression and yeah exactly and it's lose him or lose others so expensive fish when you've got a decent number of tangs in there already yeah um coral wise i, I i'm like i said i there's nothing i need yep um if i see it i i'll, I'll maybe buy it and <laughs> try and find a spot for it but uh, i'm not actively kind of hunting for anything sure. now but Apart from that, it's um, I'll just let it do its thing from now on, and yeah, awesome, and uh, and grow in and and take over and, and whatever else. And I think okay. I think it's established enough now to just uh, have less hands and yeah, let it just grow and <laughs> yeah. enjoy. You've done the hard work, and I got to say, you have you can see this system's got a lot of thought gone into it. The um, infrastructure, the automations, um, even down to the details of, of wave makers and rock work and, and your maintenance routine. It's a very well thought and the, out and system. And the leaf back wall. <laughs> yeah, 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 the leaf back wall really suits it actually. It just, it ties things in well. And like I said, I love the shelf up there to keep all that stuff out of the way. And yep. it's just a really neat system that um, is really starting to hit its strides now. So I think you've done a fantastic job. and. Really keen to see how your system grows out over another year, and then I can't wait to see it then. It'll be a glass box full of sticks just breaching the surface, which will be really, really cool. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. I'm a little bit impatient, actually, to, <laughs> to, to wonder and see what it's going to look like. But yeah, I think um, it's going to come along nicely. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks so much for having us here. really appreciate it. And um, yeah, thanks again. Thank you. All right, guys, there you have it. That was Jared's beautiful Cade 2100 SBS only system, with the exception of just a couple of little aquacultured or, I guess, spawned LPS torch in his system that um, is if you would remove those, even if you are an SBS diehard. And I gotta say, what an incredible system it was, and a massive, massive shout out to Jared for making it possible for me to come and see this system. We've been chatting and hanging out together for a very, very long time, but I've never actually made it to his house. So this was a fantastic opportunity to check out this system, and I gotta say, I was not disappointed one bit in the slightest, and I'm sure you guys all enjoyed the footage as well. Jared also had some really cool approaches to reefing, and I do like some of the equipment he had on there, which just, opened my eyes to different ways of doing things. In fact, some of the equipment that you saw on that video from Dreams Plus, we will cover a little video showcasing Dreams Plus in the short term future. The team there have got some incredible things that are really thinking outside of the box and I can't wait to share that video with you all. Other than that, I wanna give a massive shout out to Oz Aquarium's distributors who bring in things like Aquaforest and uh, Reef Factory, as well as a swarm of other brands, including Philips Coral Care that I run in my own dream reef tank. They did make this tour up to New South Wales possible, so a massive thank you to you guys out there. And of course, you'll be seeing some of the footage on screen now of us putting some of the beautiful Aquaforest range into Jared's tank that he also, I will point out, already runs anyway, but uh, some juicy B-roll never goes astray. Other than that, guys, if you enjoyed the video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you're yet to join our over 26,000 subscribers, base, please consider doing so. It takes two seconds of your time and costs no money whatsoever. Other than that, guys, I will leave you with it. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, stay safe and keep reefing. Cheers. Bye.